Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Lord, look at this technology. We got Facebook Live going and, and Instagram. Instagram going. At the same time, this praise the awesome. Lord. It is awesome. <laughs> God bless you to all of the wonderful members of the House Church and to all of our dear friends on Facebook, as well as First Lady, our new friends on Instagram. Welcome everyone. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you guys or for y'all to see us, either way you wanna say it. Uh, First Lady McGee and I, we just wanted to come on tonight to share a few things um, with you all. We see people logging on right now, First Lady. Normally I see a lot of people be waiting for a lot of folk to log on, you know, and they acknowledge them, but why don't you go ahead and acknowledge a few of these wonderful people that have just showed up. Uh, let's see. We have Tamara Lewis, mm -hmm. Elijah McGee. Oh, what's up, son? Christina Jackson. <laughs> Daughters in the faith. Amen. LaCosha. Kosha. Uh, Elder <laughs> Shaw, Elder Long. Oh, my Elder goodness. Mitchell. Oh, the leaders are in the house. The leaders are in the building. Rouse. Ooh, man, look at all these spiritual sons and daughters Amen. that's logging in. Good to have y'all with us and hang with us for a little bit. As y'all can see, I got my girl hanging with me tonight. Amen. Praise Good the Lord. Good to be here. Good Absolutely. to be hanging with y'all on tonight. Absolutely. And you know, you got to qualify everything today, First Lady. So when I say my girl, I'm talking about my wife of 36 years. We just celebrated our 36th wedding anniversary last week, first lady. Amen. Last week, celebrated 36 years. What an awesome time. It seems like a long time, and it don't seem like a long time, but we've been together for a long time. A amen. long time. Praise amen. the Lord. I think you told me last week that you would hold on to me for another 36. I think I will. <laughs> okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, let's go ahead and open up in prayer, and then we'll just share a little bit uh, what the Lord has placed on our heart, and we'll just flow together uh, with one another tonight. Father, we just thank you, and we give you praise, all the honor, and all the glory for our time together tonight. What an awesome, awesome medium that you have given unto us to That's be right. able to bring the Word of God through Facebook Live and Instagram and so many other wonderful social media avenues. We're so grateful. Your word says in the book of Daniel that knowledge would increase, that people would go to and fro. And so we can see technology has increased and we're so grateful yes. to be able to share the word of God in this manner. Now, I trust and pray that what you've placed on First Lady McGee, as well as my heart, that it would be a blessing to those who are tuning in, those who are watching, and even those who will log in. May we speak as the oracles of God, not from our mind, not from our soul, yes. but by the spirit of the living God. And may we all be edified tonight in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, if you guys have your Bible, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 21, Luke chapter 21, and uh, I'll start reading just two verses, verses 10 and verse 11 from the voice translation, the voice translation. And then of course, First Lady McGee and I will weave back and forth with the new King James as well. And we'll make a couple of statements, a couple of comments and those type of things. But Luke chapter 21, verse 10 to 11 from the voice, it says this, you can count on this, Nation will attack nation, and kingdom will make war on kingdom. There will be disturbances around the world, from great earthquakes to famines to epidemics, to epidemics. Amen. Terrifying things will happen, and there will be shocking signs from heaven. Once again, Luke 21, 10 to 11 from The Voice. And I love the first part of it. It says, you can count on this. This was Jesus talking to his disciples. He said, you can count on this. So that's what First Lady McGee and I want to talk to you about tonight. Count on it. Count on it. Everyone just type in count on it. Just type in count on it. And what we're counting on is the subtitle, Victory Over This Virus. Amen. Count on it, First Lady. Thank victory you. over this virus. Type in right now, count on it. You know, First Lady, would you read this wonderful quote from science fiction author Myra Grant? 
and she quotes, there is nothing so patient in this world or any other as a virus searching for a host. Mm, can you read that <laughs> again? Awesome. That is awesome. There is nothing so patient in this world or any other mm -hmm. as a virus searching for a host. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, count on it. When you hear that term, count on it, it's actually, First Lady, an idiomatic term. Idiomatic just means figure of speech, the way we speak today, the way we talk. It's an idiomatic term that is frequently used in our society, and count on it conveys the thought that something or something someone can be relied upon. Mm -hmm. When we say count on it, the term count on it also means that we can expect or anticipate that something both significant and specific will come to pass. You know, if we say, for example, I'll see you tomorrow for lunch, and then the next person will say, you can count on it, I'll be there. That's right, you can count on it, I'll be there, or we'll see you at church. Mm -hmm. You can count on it, count I'll on be it. there, I'll be there. So that's where that term, you can count on it, comes from. Well, as we all know by now, the news media um, has been bombarding us with information that America, along with many other countries, is actually being affected by this pandemic, pandemic, excuse me, this widespread pandemic known as coronavirus or COVID or COVID-19, COVID-19, uh, corona, coronavirus, you know, and uh, I want you to read them some wonderful numbers that we see here, so many different numbers, some of them good, some of them bad. Yes, and we know also that these numbers, they change every day. So when you look on the news again, they probably going to already have changed. Uh, the first one is 212,000 cases of COVID-19 have been reported in at least 170 wow. countries and territories. Mm. The major outbreaks have been in China, Iran, and the European nation. 7,374 confirmed cases, wow. 115 deaths in all 50 states. Mm. More than 8,700 people have died from COVID-19. Wow. And over 84,000 have recovered from COVID-19. Praise God. Praise Amen. Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, that's the good news. Yes, that's good We don't news. hear a whole lot about that, First Lady, right. that 84,000 people have recovered from the COVID-19 or coronavirus, um, 84,000 people. And like you said, that number constantly changes when we're watching the news, but we don't hear too much about that. We're just constantly hearing about all those who've been affected and those who have died. But this is wonderful news right here, that 84,000 people have recovered from it. You Marcus Malloy that said in reference to the coronavirus, and I quote, the coronavirus pandemic is a world changing event like 9-11. There was a world before COVID-19, and there will be a world after COVID-19, but it won't be the same. Mm -hmm. But it won't be the same. That's a very interesting um, quote there. You know, COVID-19 is primarily spread between people like influenza. Influenza, we know it as the flu, uh, via the respiratory droplets from coughing and from sneezing, first lady. It is actually considered most contagious when people are symptomatic, although transmission may be possible before symptoms appear. And the time between exposure and symptoms onset is typically five days, but may range from two to 14 mm, days. Mm. Common symptoms include fever, cough, runny nose, sore throat, aches and pains, and shortness of breath. Mm. Now, complications from the virus may include pneumonia and acute respiratory distress syndrome. Unfortunately, currently there is no vaccine, wow. but the efforts to eliminate COVID-19 are make sure you wash your hands, <laughs> keep your hands clean, yes. make sure you use sanitizer wherever you go, covering your mouth when you're sneezing or coughing, or even if you just get sleepy and got to do a big old yarn, right. make sure you cover your mouth. Yeah. Maintain distance from others. I believe they say like two to four feet That's or something yeah. right now, maintaining yeah. like the yeah. social distance 
distancing. Right. And then you self quarantine yourself. If you don't have to go anywhere, right. stay at home. Right, exactly. You know, and even with what you just mentioned, maintaining distance from others, we've been experiencing that over the last few days since we returned from Minnesota. Right. Uh, you actually had a follow up uh, doctor's appointment on Monday. And when we stepped in the doctor's office, they normally have like 20 chairs lined up together next to each other. But when we went in there the other day, they had like five or six chairs. They removed so many of them. And then they had five or six chairs and they had them spread out. What, like two or three feet? Yeah. Uh, from one another. From one another, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that was real interesting to see that. Well, we want you to know that Christ has given us the victory over this virus. Amen. My, my, my. Yes. Christ has given us the victory you, over this virus. Can you all just type hallelujah yes. right there? Type hallelujah right there on Instagram too. Type hallelujah. Yes. Christ has given us the victory over this virus. First lady, won't you read that verse of scripture right there? Philippians chapter two, verse nine through to 11 from the New King James Version. And it says, Therefore, God also has mm. highly exalted him mm -hmm. and given him the name which is above every name, yeah. that at the name of Jesus, every <sighs> knee should bow of those in heaven and of those mm. on earth and of those under the earth, mm -hmm. and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, my, my, the my. Father. Amen. My, my. He said he has given him the name which is above every name. <laughs> Coronavirus, yeah. right. Jesus' name is above that yeah. name, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus' Absolutely. name is above that name. Hallelujah. He's the one that Hallelujah. we look unto for our health. Amen. Yes. So yes. his name is above that it's name. Above it. It's above it. Yeah, it's a, all the way above it. All the way above. However high you want to go, that's how high it is above the and, coronavirus. And, right, and whatever people want to call it. Yes. COVID nineteen, corona right. virus, it doesn't matter. Right. Like you're saying, first lady, based on the text, the name of Jesus is above it. Yes. So Jesus gives us victory over the virus. Yes, he yes. gives us victory over this virus. There's this phrase that's actually been running in my spirit for the last couple of days that first lady McGee and I want to drop on you all on Facebook and on Instagram. And we want you to run with it. We want you to run with it. Amen. And here's the phrase, hashtag Christ oh, over Corona. corona. <laughs> Real simple. Amen. Type that in right now on Instagram and Facebook. Hashtag Christ over Corona. Amen. Hashtag Christ over Corona. One more time. Hashtag Christ over Corona over corona praise the lord i mean that phrase has just been running through my spirit first lady as you know for the last couple of days and uh i want that thing to be i want that to be viral hashtag christ over corona well you know viewed as a pandemic the coronavirus was first identified in wuhan hubei china in december 2019 the outbreak was recognized as a pandemic by the World Health Organization last week on March the 11th. Now, our anniversary was March the 10th. And the very next day, the health organization, World Health Organization, actually named the coronavirus as a pandemic. Well, here's another revelation that's been running in my spirit for the last couple of days. And I want to drop this on you again on Instagram and okay. Facebook because we love them that much. The word pandemic, the word pandemic, P-A-N-D-E-M-I-C, pandemic, uh -huh. P-A-N-D-E-M-I-C, pandemic. Demic. If you drop out the letters DM, it leaves the word panic. Panic. <laughs> awesome. Oh my goodness. Pandemic, P A N D E M I C. Uh -huh. If you drop out the D E M, first lady, right. it leaves the word panic. Right so really, when a pandemic comes about, it brings with it panic. Mama, that's true. 
And isn't that what we've been seeing That's across the nation? Yes, it is. We've been seeing it across the nation. While we were in Minnesota, we had been hearing about um, all the different shortages of, now listen at this, toilet tissue and paper towels. Paper towels. And hand sanitizer. <laughs> and, and alcohol. And rubbing alcohol. And rubbing alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and we were in Minnesota and we were like, what in the world is going on? Why is everybody buying a toilet tissue Paper and paper towels. Well, of course, we know, you know, everyone wants to clean and make sure that they're, everything is sanitized and all that. So we get that. We get that. We understand that. But it tickled us at first because we're like, man, people are panicking. Yes. They're panicking. We went out throughout the stores uh, when we first got back on Sunday and shelves were cleaned out. <laughs> we went out a little bit yesterday and shelves were cleaned out. And we went out again today, and guess what? Shells were cleaned out. <laughs> Some shells were cleaned out again. Why? Because people are panicking. Yes. They hear the word pandemic, and they start to panic. Yes. First, they share with them the definition for these two words, panic and epidemic. The definition for the word panic is a sudden overpowering feeling of fear, often affecting man often affecting man, many, many people mm -hmm. at once. Yes. A sense of overwhelming terror mm. that causes a mental and wow. emotional state of frantic activity, usually accompanied by extreme concern or anxiety. Mm. My, isn't that what we're seeing today? Yeah. That's going on right now. It's going on right now. It's going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. And the definition for the word epidemic mm -hmm. is that which spreads rapidly and extensively wow. by infection and affecting many individuals in an area of population at the same time. Mm -hmm. An outbreak of a contagious disease that potentially spreads rapidly and worldwide. And worldwide. Pandemic. Uh -huh. and, and you have here a, a, uh, an example is pandemic. That's right. what pandemic, epidemic epidemic, pandemic, all of that breeds one thing, panic. And as your pastor, members of the house church, yes. our friends on Facebook and Instagram, hear us good. Don't panic. Please don't panic. Don't panic. Everything is going to be all right. I love what my, my very dear friend, Bishop Jesse Giddens, said to me today when we were talking to one another. I loved it. We both laughed. And this is what he said. He said, Johnny, don't you realize that God knew that the coronavirus would be on the scene? He said, we didn't know it. It caught us off guard. Right, right. But it hasn't caught God off guard. Yes. And he and I laughed, we rejoiced. This is why we don't have to panic as the people of God. The Bible says whatever is not of faith is sin. Worrying is a sin. Yeah. If you're worrying, how are you going to make it? How are we going to get through this? How are we going to survive this? If you're worrying about it, you're, that's a sin. Right. As a matter of fact, I shared with you last time we was on with you guys live that Job said in the book of Job, right. the thing that I greatly feared come has come up on me. Mm -hmm. The thing that I greatly feared has come up on me. Right. And so God doesn't walk, want us to walk in fear. And we'll say a little bit about that in a few moments. So in efforts to isolate and to contain this virus, many nations, including us here in the United States, have suspended our economy by shutting down restaurants, schools, a host of businesses, and even church services. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even church services have been suspended. Now, interestingly, having that option, First Lady, uh, to suspend church services has actually caused many Christians to be divided and split down the middle mm. concerning whether uh, those type of so-called closures of the church during this time was due to faith or fear. Mm. <laughs> and, and one of the things that interests me as a member of the body of Christ is it seems like we can't agree on nothing. It just seems okay. like we can't agree on nothing. Okay. Some of us say, hey, we want to close the church to protect the members. Right. And then folk hate on that. And then you have other folk that say, well, we want to continue to have church 
and then you have folk hate on that. Right. It's like a catch-22. You can't win for losing. Right. And it seems like the church just can't get together on anything. This is why you have to follow the convictions of your heart and not be moved and swayed with the opinions and the ideas of man. Right. You have to follow the convictions of your heart. And so oftentimes people think, well, if you close the church, that means you're walking in fear. No, that's not what that means. Maybe you're walking in wisdom. Maybe you're doing your best to preserve and to protect the flock. Maybe that's what that means, right. you know? And so you have to realize, family, that fear is contagious. Yes. Fear is contagious, yes. okay? Yes. Fear is very contagious. You know, in the like manner of faith, uh, faith comes by hearing, but fear also comes by hearing. Yes. So the thing that you're listening to all the time, whether it's positive or negative, you will have faith for that. Right, right. Right? That's right. Just like uh, the news channels, that's mm -hmm. all we hear right now yep. is about yep. coronavirus and coronavirus. 24-7. And, if you, just, 24 7. and if, you, if you just sit there and soak yeah. all of that stuff yeah. up, then yeah. fear is going to actually come. That's right. So we don't want to just sit there and soak out. Of course, we want to get to today's no, news Absolutely. and all of that, but Absolutely. we don't want to sit there 24-7 soaking up what the news channels are telling us all the time. Right. We want to be in faith. Absolutely. We want to trust Absolutely. in God. God is the one that we trust in. Mm. God is the one Come that on, we girl. believe in. And we know God is the overcomer of yes. all of this. And we yes. know that, that God is going to bring us out of this. Absolutely. Amen. So we continue Absolutely. to trust in God over this. Praise the Lord. That's exactly right. Our trust is in the Lord. Isn't that what the scriptures teach us? I will lift up my eyes unto yes. the hills yes. from which cometh my help. My help comes from the yes. Lord. Yes. So we're yes. going to be all right. We're going to make it through this. So it's just amazing to me, you know, how the church gets split down the middle. It seems like we can never agree on anything. You know, you close the church, folk want to hate on you. You keep the church open, folk want to hate on you. And so as a leader, you can't be bound by the opinions of people. You have to follow, again, first say the conviction of your heart. Now listen at this, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. We, we know it. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, yes. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. <laughs> now, now that's exactly what we need during this pandemic, a sound mind. <laughs> that's what we need. We need a sound mind. Matter of fact, while you're watching, type right there, I have a sound mind. Type it right there on Facebook and on Instagram. Type it right there. I have a sound mind. Yes. I have a sound mind. I'm not going to be caught up. I'm not going to be bound by fear. I'm not going to panic in this situation. I'm going to relax. Amen. I'm going to relax. I have a sound mind. And then Romans 8, verse 15, first lady, it says, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Listen at that. Mm -hmm. Again to fear. You know, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. So fear there's bondage that comes with that. Right. When fear grips your heart, fear grips your mind, it grips your emotions. There, there's bondage with that. You got some people, they are afraid to even come out. Mm -hmm. You know, now, of course, we know the CDC and our president, you know, they put out words to us, you know, encouraging us not to get with groups larger than 10. At one time, it was 50. And that's OK. You got some people, they even, even encouraged us to stay in if you don't have to go out. Right. I'm cool with that. Right. But I'm not staying in because I'm bound by fear. Nope. No, I'm not staying in because of that. I'm staying in because they said stay in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they said stay in, so I'm gonna chill. Praise the Lord. And first they read that last scripture right there. Yeah, Philippians 4 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, mm -hmm. but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Yeah. Be anxious for nothing. Don't mm -hmm. worry about anything. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about anything. Just lift it up to God in prayer. Amen. Exactly. Praise the Lord. And then it was author Lele. Layla, excuse me, Gifty Akita. I like that name. Layla Gifty Akita, who was an author, she simply said, and I quote, faith can cure fear. Amen. It doesn't get any better than that. First lady, it doesn't get any Amen. better than that. Faith 
can cure fear. Amen. It doesn't. It doesn't get any better than that. What's that statement right there? Hashtag. Hashtag Christ over Corona. Yeah, yeah. Type that too. <laughs> Type it again. Hashtag Christ over Corona. Come on, Instagram. Come on, Instagram. Type it right there. Hashtag Christ over. Corona, Amen. Christ over Corona. So, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, in this unique and unprecedented time, such as this in our nation, we still have many Christians, as we said earlier, that struggles with the notion of the church, you know, being cautious, right. being cautious in suspending its services. You know, you hear people say, I can't believe that the church is closed. I can't believe that the church is closed. Well, opposed to thinking that the church is closed, why don't you just say the church is cautious? Amen. The church is cautious. It's interesting. Everyone around us is cautious, right. except the church. Hmm. Everyone around us is cautious. Now, right. now we went we went to a medical facility today for a follow up, and uh, again, it wasn't that many people. wasn't that many people in there. But there was a woman in there this morning that she had a mask on her face and she was coughing up a storm. Yes, she was. And as she was coughing up a storm, many of the people that was in there started looking at her. And remember the two ladies working behind the counter, they were staring at her right. and they even asked her, hey, are you all right? Do you need something to drink? Are you all right? You need something to drink? And you could tell they were kind of like, look, we got to hurry up and get her up out of here because we're being cautious. Right. We're being cautious. And then share with them what, what we saw even yesterday when we went to the meat market to go in and how they were limiting that. Yeah, we went to the meat market on yesterday and they were limiting, limiting, limiting. limiting. Mm -hmm. I got you. I got you. <laughs> it was limiting ten people at a time in the yeah, meat market. In the meat market, only ten people can go in at a time. So they had a worker standing at the door. Uh, the door is locked. Yeah. And they will unlock the door and let you in. And yeah. after you go in, if nobody's behind you, they'll lock the door. They back. lock. They show sure enough did. They locked the door behind us yeah. and made sure it was only ten. Why? Because they're following instructions. They're right. being cautious. So it's amazing. And then you look at the news today. You start seeing uh, some of the governments and some of the cities are shutting down businesses. And of course, that affects the economy to a degree. But there's a method to the madness. Right. And it seems like everyone around us is taking heed to that, except the church, mm. except the church. Now, of course, First Lady McGee, let's just go on and put this out there. We know that because we are people of God and we're people of faith, we automatically know that we're going to quote a couple of scriptures in the process. We're going to quote, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Hebrews 10, 25. I feel that. We're going to quote, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Psalms 91, 10. I'm cool with that. Amen. I'm cool with that. I feel that too. Those are scriptures. Yes. That's the word of God. We stand on the word of God. I feel all of that. Amen. And yet at the same time, and yet at the same time, I believe that there has to be a balance even with that. Now, you may not feel that way, but that's where I am in my walk with the Lord, First Lady, that there has to be a balance with those scriptures that you just quoted. You know, for example, Proverbs 22 and 3, one of my favorite, that balances those out. It says, a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Hmm. OK, so a prudent man, it didn't say anything about a fearful man. Right. It said a prudent man, someone who is wise, someone who is thinking, someone who is analyzing certain things and looking at this thing from a different perspective. Right. It says a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Ain't nothing going on out there. Ain't nothing going on out there. Mm -hmm. And see, God wants us to operate in faith, but he don't want us to operate in foolishness. Amen. Yeah, because the scriptures even teach us that if we drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt us. Right. Now, because we know that and because we know that that's the word, right. that doesn't mean that we arbitrarily walk out here and pick up a bottle with the skull and bones on it that says poison. And we drink that because we know the word says that if I drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt me. Now, see, now you're walking in foolishness. Right. You're walking in foolishness. Right. And so really, there just has to be a maturing. We have to mature in the things of God. There's a balance to all this. I'm okay either way. 
If a pastor decides to keep the church open, want to have his congregation come out, I'm cool with that. That's your church. Right. Lead your church the way God is telling you to lead. Yes. If a pastor says, you yes. know what, the Lord is telling me I need to go on and shut our church down for a season to keep our people safe, then praise the Lord. I'm cool with that. That's your church. Right. Lead your church the way God is telling you to lead your church. Right. Don't be bound by other people. Don't be concerned yes. by what other folk do. They don't pay your church's bills. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so either way, I'm cool either way. We need to stop hating on one another. If you want to have service, praise the Lord, have service. If you want to be someone that we close the church based on what we're hearing in the news and now we meet in wonderful social media forums like this, right. where we're not, we're not in contact per se, but we're still in contact. Yeah. <laughs> Man, see, see, it's, it's, it's all in your perspective. Yeah. We're not in contact, but we're still in contact. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, first lady. You, you see what I'm saying? You know, yeah. we're still we're still in contact, and so you know that's one of the things that we need to understand. And now notice this in Romans chapter 13. Here's another scripture that's a balance to me to, to those others. Romans 13, one to five. Let every soul be subject or submitted to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Wow. The authorities that exist are appointed by God. That's so, good. Yeah, go ahead. First lady, no, would you want to add? No, I just say that's good. Yeah, yes, yeah, appointed by God. It doesn't matter if you voted for them or not. Right. Whether you voted for them or not, they got where they are because God allowed them to. That's right. Yeah, right. when people say, I ain't vote for him, I ain't vote for him, it doesn't matter. He got there because God allowed him to. She got there because God allowed her to. Right. They are a part of God's plan. You may not know what that plan is. I may not know what that plan is, but they are a part of God's plan. Amen. Okay, so notice what it says. Therefore, then it says in verse 2, first lady, therefore, whoever resists the authority, this is Romans 13, verses 1 to 5, verse 2, therefore, whoever resists the authority, resist the ordinance of God. See, you think you're fighting against the authority, but you're fighting God. Mm. <laughs> That's awesome. Therefore, whoever resists the authority, resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist, listen at this, sweetheart, will bring judgment on themselves. You bring judgment on yourself, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Then do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is the minister to you for good, but if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister. Yes. Now, now look at that. Now, now, it didn't say that they are of God from the standpoint that they're born again. Right. It says the office, that office, they are God's ministers. Mm. And an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil, verse 5, therefore you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. Conscious sake. You got to be submitted. In other words, what that's simply saying is we're supposed to obey the laws of the land, Christians. Amen. Church folk, Amen. we're supposed to obey the law of the land. And our government has put out a mandatory edict that there aren't to be any gatherings over 10 people for a specific time period. And so our church, I'm talking about our church and many right. other churches, our church is larger than 10 people. Right. You know, it's larger than 50. It's even larger than 100, so forth and so on. Okay. And so the government has put that out. And of course, we trust God. We believe God. But you got to balance this out. Right. You know, we're supposed to obey the laws of the land. And so now there shouldn't be this divide that we constantly see uh, in the body of Christ with that. You know, one of the things that we have to understand is that the scriptures exhort us, first lady, to obey God rather than man. Amen. OK, Amen. to obey God rather than man. I'm going to let you jump in in a few moments. But this thing is on me right now, you know, to obey God rather than man. That's Acts chapter five, verse twenty nine. We're supposed to obey God rather than man. But that is if the laws of man are contrary to the laws of God, God instead of man, especially when the laws of man are contrary 
to the laws of God. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. In reference to the COVID-19 and limiting our gatherings to 10 people in order to isolate the virus and to preserve human life, our government has not restricted the church at all from utilizing other social media outlets such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Periscope, you name it, you yeah. throw it in there. WhatsApp, the government has not said you can't do that. Amen. Amen. The government said one thing, we don't want y'all to be out here in larger groups than 10. We're trying to isolate this virus. We're trying to shut this thing down. We're trying to kill it. And all these large gatherings, whether it's for businesses, movies, or whatever, even the church, it's going to hinder us from isolating this virus. But they did not say that you can't preach the gospel right. in other forms. Right, right. Man, come on, man. We can still get the come gospel on, out even through this media. We don't yes. have to be in a church building per se. Yes, we all like to come together to fellowship with one another, but this is why God gave man the idea and the creativity <laughs> for this social media. Mm, we can't get to it. the building, that's we can it. get to you on the screen. Come, like we're doing now. Like we're doing now. Like we're doing right now. We're getting the word of God right now. Churches all around the world right now doing are the doing thing. the exact exact same thing we're doing right now. Yes. Yeah. The government hasn't hindered that. The government hasn't stopped us from that. Right. The government hasn't said you can't preach and I don't want you to gather in your building, but I also don't want you to preach on Facebook, preach on Instagram. Right. The government has not said that. No. We have to grow up. We have yes. to mature yes. as the people of God. See, that's what sonship is all about. Yes. That's what sonship is all about. We have to grow up and we have to mature in our thinking, yes. in our thinking. Yes. Okay. That's not a put down, but we just have to grow and mature. So now now, these are all wonderful technological resources for us to continue to spread the word without spreading the virus. <laughs> we can continue to spread the word without spreading the virus. Look at this. We're on Facebook and Instagram at the same time. We'll do a telephonic robocall in the next two days. You know, we'll share some more things with our wonderful members telephonically in the next few days. The Apostle Paul and the disciples, they wish they had this kind of technology. Yes, they did. They wouldn't have been doing all that walking. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. They wouldn't have had to do all that walking, wouldn't wear down those sandals. Yeah, yeah. They walked Amen. everywhere. It yes. took them days, weeks, and months to get the gospel to where God wanted it to go. Amen. Now we have Facebook, YouTube, MySpace, Periscope, WhatsApp. Y'all know the rest of them. Type in some of those other ones. Y'all know the rest of them. We got all this stuff, emails. We got all this texting, text messaging, right. direct message. We got all the avenues right. that we can get the word out. Amen. We can't meet in our building? Cool. See you on Facebook, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Amen. <laughs> we can't meet in our building? Cool. See you on Facebook, Sunday morning, at 10 a.m. Yeah. We may come in here with a little praise and worship music thumping. Never know. You never know. <laughs> but that's the way we like it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So technology, first lady, technology. Daniel 12 and 4, I quoted it earlier, but Daniel 12 and 4 said that Man shall be going to and fro, and knowledge will increase. Mm -hmm. Knowledge will increase. So the knowledge has increased for us to do this. Knowledge will increase. And here's a little revelation. Won't you share this little revelation of the word knowledge and technology? Knowledge equals technology. Mm -hmm. Knowledge equals technology. Yeah. Y'all get it? Yeah, I caught it. Knowledge. Knowledge. Equals. Equals. Technology. Technology. We can get knowledge. Knowledge. From technology. From technology. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Amen. There's a revelation in that. Amen. Knowledge equals technology. In the word technology, 
is the word knowledge. Right. It's just felt different. Right. Technology, knowledge is in that word. And so that's where we are with technology. So we must remember House Church and our friends on Facebook and Instagram. As Christians, we must remember that we, the people of God, are we are the church. Yes. We are the church. We are the church. We're the ecclesia, the called out ones. We are the church, not the building. Yes. yes. I just need to stare at y'all for a second. <laughs> Amen. Because Christian folk forget that. Yep. We are the church, not the building. We right. thank God for the building now. Yes, we, we do. We thank God for the building. Yes, we do. That's the place where we meet. Yes. That's the place where the church meet. But you know, First Lady, we love to say, I'm going to church. I'm going to church. You're talking about a physical building. Right. But we are the church. Yes. No, not only am I going to church, we understand. We're not going to play some manners. We know what you mean. N not only am I going to church, but the church is in me. Yes. I, 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 I am the I church. Am the church. I am a church. Yes. So whether I'm meeting in a building or not, that doesn't move me. Right. I, I'm the church. Right. We're the church. We're meeting right now. Yes, we are. There, there's, a, there's a group of churches called Church Without Walls. It's mm -hmm. a group of churches that's called Church Without right. Walls. And to people that are like us that love buildings, and it doesn't mean that they don't have a building, yeah. but they have a revelation. We're a church without walls. We don't want these four walls to limit what God wants to do with us. Confine us. Yeah, to confine us. Mm -hmm. And so we are the church. So even though we couldn't get to the building this Sunday or tonight, we don't know. We're going to wait and see what's going to happen on Sunday. Even if we can't get to the building, house church members, you are the church. Yes. You are the church. Yes. You are the church. Amen. Read First Peter 2, first lady. First Peter 2, uh, first Peter chapter 2, verse 45 says, coming to him mm -hmm. as to a living stone. Yeah. Yeah. Rejected indeed by men. Yeah but chosen by God and mm. precious. Mm. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Yeah. You also, as mm -hmm. living stones, Come on, work it. are being built up mm -hmm. a spiritual house. Spiritual house. You're the spiritual house. You are the spiritual house. Not the physical building. Not the physical building. You are. You are. The spiritual the house. The spiritual house. Amen. You got it. Amen. You got it. That's clear. That's the text. Amen. We so married to a building that the moment that we feel we can't meet in this building, we go haywire. Right. No, you are the church. Mm -hmm. You are the church. God has given us a sound mind. Yes. I'm mature. I'm mature. I'm maturing. That's what you ought to be saying. I'm mature. I'm maturing. It doesn't mean that we've arrived. Now, I'm not saying that. It doesn't mean that we've arrived. I'm maturing. I'm mature. Yes. I'm maturing. I am the church. So whether I ever meet in 5149, I know that I am the church. I'm not going to lose my salvation because I didn't make it to a building. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ma, 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 ma. So until we're able to physically meet again, each of us has been mandated and has the responsibility, listen at this, to work out our own salvation Amen. and to guard your heart. You got to work out your own salvation. Philippians 2, verse 12 and 13 says, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. Mm. There it is, First Lady. You've obeyed, not just in my presence. Right. That means even when we're not together, you should still be obeying the word of God. Yes. Even when you can't physically be yes. with your shepherd, you should still be obeying the teachings of your shepherd. Yes. Yes. Man. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Mm hmm <laughs> Much more in my absence. In other words, if there was ever a time for me to work the word, it's when I'm not around my shepherd. Amen. It's when my shepherd is not physically with me Sunday morning, Wednesday night, and any other service that we may have. Yes. It is my responsibility as God's people 
it's my responsibility to make sure that I'm working this word in my life, even when I'm not around my shepherd. Amen. Okay, let's keep going. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more, much more in my absence. Here it is, first lady. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Man, that's a word right there. That's a mouthful. Work out your own salvation. Yes. Yeah, you work out your own salvation because as our father in the faith said, God rests his soul while he's in heaven. Our father in the faith always taught us, you work out your own salvation because you have a salvation that works. Yes. <laughs> Man, I'm saved, man. I'm saved, man. I have a salvation that works. I'm not playing with this thing. I'm saved. And whether I'm in a physical building or not, First Lady, we are, you just read it, we're lively stones. Yes. We are the spiritual house. Right. And so now I'm going to work out my own salvation. I'm working up a sweat up in here. I'm going to work out my own salvation. In other words, now is the time mm -hmm. for all the wonderful members of the house church. Yes. Now is the time for you to do what I've been teaching you. Yes, pastor has taught us many of messages. Go back in your notes. Go over your notes. Go over the word that he's already given unto us and work out your own soul salvation. That's all you need to do. Just because we can't get into the building physically, yeah, yeah. you still have word. If you've been taking notes, if you have CDs, uh, whatever the case may be, get into the word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Just go back over the old messages. Yeah. Get them in your spirit. Because you know, you hear them one time, you don't get it in your no, soul. That no, word not in at your all. spirit. Not at all. One time. It takes time to get the word in your spirit. Right, so just right. go back over your notes. Go right. back over the word. Continue right. to read and continue to pray and to get into the word of God every day yeah. and do yeah. what the word says. That's exactly right. You know, this, this is going to pass. This is going to pass. We, we haven't gone this way before here in America. This is going to pass, you know, and so we need to mature and we need to grow in the things of God. Again, we're not hating on anyone. If there's a pastor and you want to have certain praise, God, pastor, we lifting y'all up. Amen. If you are a pastor and you decide, you know what, we're not going to have service. We're going to do our best to comply with our city officials. We want to try to help right. them kill this coronavirus. And so we're going to limit our contact and we're going to use all these other wonderful mediums on social media to stay in touch with our members just like what we're doing right now first lady right and so now it's time for us to work out our own salvation everything we've been teaching you over the years everything we've been teaching you over the weeks we started this year off with the lordship of jesus christ yes awesome work now we didn't know this was going to happen first lady we didn't know COVID-19, uh, we didn't know, COVID, I keep saying COVID, COVID-19, you know, I don't care what that thing is called. We didn't know, we didn't know that that was going to jump off, right. but the Lord had us to start the year off with the principle of Lordship. Mm. Jesus is Lord. Yes, he is. He's Lord. Yes. I'm not going to get bent out of shape because the government is saying, we don't want you to gather in groups uh, larger than 10. Right. I, that don't have nothing to do, I'm not going to get been out of shape over that. Y'all are trying to help us. Right. You're trying to help us stay healthy. Yes, I'm going to quote my scriptures. Yes, I'm going to read the word. Yes, I'm going to stand on the word. Amen. Christ is my rock. Yes. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is seeking sand. I'm standing on the rock. I'm not moved one bit or the other, first lady. Amen. Not one bit or the other. Girl, I've been up in here preaching. Go on and read Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Mm. Keep mm. your heart with yeah, all your heart. diligence. Keep your heart. Yes. Keep your heart. While we're not together physically, it's up to you to guard your heart. Amen. Keep your heart. It's up to you to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, go ahead and share these little nuggets with them, First Lady. 
Now is the time for you to put to practice all the word that pastor has taught us over the years, as he already said. All the word that he's taught us, now it's time to walk that word out in your life. Amen. Yeah. Now, this is a great time mm -hmm. for us, who, especially for those who are at home, can't go to work, and you're working from home, or whatever yeah. the case may be. This is a great time for you to really get into the word of God and to seek his face. This is a good time for yeah. you to pray, get in all the time that you need with God, because I know with some of us working, going out every mm -hmm. day, we don't have mm -hmm. that time all the time That's just right. to sit and to get into the word. Now, yeah. if you're at home, you have that time to do that, to sit and to get in the word of God and to seek his faith mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. see what he is saying to you specifically, yeah. Yeah. because God is speaking something to you specifically during this time yes, of this is. virus that's yes, going around. Is. Yes, Amen. he is. Yes, he is. You brought out a good point, First Lady. Now it's time. Now is the time. They want us to stay home. Okay, cool. Praise the Lord. Let, let's make the best of that. You know, spending time. Now you have time to spend time with your children. Now you got the time to spend time with your spouse. Now, now you got to look at each other. <laughs> yeah, now you got to look at each other. Now you got to talk. Now, I'm about to say that. <laughs> now you got to talk. Yeah, now you got now you got to talk, you know. And so and that's a good thing, first lady. Yeah. That's a good thing. All this technology for the from the standpoint many of us we we do that more than we do spending time with each other. Right. And so this is a time where we can regroup, we can recalibrate and we can get refocused to spending time with Amen. our families and get back to what really matters. Amen. What really matters. Now, I want to read this scripture as me and first Lady McGee get ready to bring this to a close. You all have been so wonderful. Yes. I pray that yes. first Lady McGee and I have been a blessing to you all tonight. But I wanted to read something to you that once again it's a revelation that that the lord has blessed me with i'm not saying it's a revelation that nobody else knows. i'm not saying that i'm talking about insight while i've been praying about this particular situation that we're in now when it comes to the government saying you know no more than 10 gatherings or no more than 10 and some of the churches we may have to discontinue our services just for a season there's a scripture that the lord brought to my heart as a matter of fact when we were out today again at that medical facility the one of the gentlemen one of the surgeons there asked me what did I do and I told him I was a pastor and he said wow praise the Lord he was a believer he said wow praise the Lord pastor and then he asked me about our services he said well pastor what are you doing with your services he said are you meeting have you counseled your services what are you doing and I told him, I said, well, tonight, I said, I'm actually going to be on Facebook Live and Instagram. I'm going to be talking to my congregation and our friends, and I'm going to be bringing the word that way. And he looked at me and he said, praise the Lord, pastor. He said, that's awesome. My pastor is doing the same thing tonight. My pastor discontinued the services and my pastor is also using the social media. So I'll be tuning in tonight with my pastor. And I said, wow, look at that. So God has given us the opportunity to use all these various uh, mediums that we have for, for social media. But listen at this text. I want to share this with you and just drop this nugget on y'all before we go. It's from Exodus chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 13. It's lengthy, but I'm going to do my best to get through it in a timely manner. Exodus 12, verse 1 to 13. And it's dealing with them prior to them coming out of of the um, out of Egypt and then I'm going to drop down to verse 23 okay so here it is here it is Exodus 12 1 to 13 and then I'm going to swing down to verse 23 it says now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt Egypt represents bondage in the land of Egypt saying this month shall be your beginning of months it shall be the first month of the year to you speak to all the congregation of Israel saying on the 10th of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons, according to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. Verse 7. And they shall take some of the blood 
and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses mm -hmm. where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. Eat everything. Verse 10, you shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. Verse 11, and thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Be ready to go. So shall you eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Verse 12, for I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. He killing everything. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now, here we go. Verse 13. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague, mm -hmm. the plague, the pandemic, right. the epidemic, when I pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So God tells Moses to tell the nation of Israel, the Hebrews, Get ready. God is about to bust a move. We about to get up out this joint. We about to get up out of here. God wants you to eat this lamb. He wants you to kill the lamb, eat the lamb, eat everything. Put your coat on, put your shoes on, get your staff. We about to bust a move up out of here. And then God wants you to put the blood over the doorpost, over the doorpost. Because when the death angel comes through, when the plague comes through, when the virus comes through, mm -hmm. when he sees the blood on your doorpost, he's going to pass over your house. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Psalm 91. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Right? Amen. But now listen at this in verse 20, in verse uh, 23. In verse 23, well, let me start with verse 21. Verse 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, pick out and take a lamb for yourselves according to your families and kill the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. Now, now here it is right here. Listen carefully, Instagram, Facebook. We're still continuing verse 22. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out the door of his house mm. <laughs> until morning. Stay inside. Amen. God put them on a quarantine. Mm. Stay inside. God said, I'm about to bust a move to help you get up out of here. But I need you to stay inside. Give me a sign. Put the blood over the doorpost. When the death angel comes through, he's going to pass over your house, hit everyone else's house with this plague. Mm. But I need you to stay inside. Mm. Awesome. Man, that's the word. That's the word. So this is why we have to we have to mature. I'm not coming down on anyone, first lady. Right. I, I know where my conviction is at. Stay inside. Matter of fact, everybody type that right now. Facebook and Instagram. Stay inside. Put hashtag stay inside. Stay inside. That's what they said. Right. That's what the CDC said. If you don't have to go out, stay inside. Now, if you do, we understand. But if you don't have to go out, stay inside. Stay inside. Amen. Stay inside. And none of you shall go out the door of his house until morning. God put him on quarantine. Stay inside. Stay inside. Verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood, there it is, first lady. Amen. When he sees the blood. We've been saved by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus is on our lives yes. as believers. When he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house to strike you, to strike you. 
Wow. That's awesome word. Wow. That's an awesome word. I was so blessed as I was in meditation and just chilling, actually, just meditating on a few things, sweetheart. And that text came up in my spirit. And when I read it, I just leaped for joy and said, my goodness, this is why we're supposed to obey the laws of the land. And here it is in scripture where God is telling them a plague is coming. Stay inside. Stay inside. Okay. Praise the Lord. I want to read this um, quote to you from English historian Thomas Fuller. He who cures a disease may be the skillfulest, but he that prevents it is the safest physician. He who cures a disease may be the skillfulest, but he that prevents it is the safest physician. That's so wonderful. So first, Amy McGee and I want to close out with this. I know our Instagram has just stopped, but we're still here on Facebook. That's because I was preaching too long, first lady. <laughs> preaching too long. Good word, though. Good uh, thank word. you, sweetheart. I know we're in uncharted waters as a nation and as a church. And so, therefore, our priority should be to pray for our leaders. Pray for our leaders that God would give them the wisdom needed to lead our nation through this crisis known as COVID-19. Amen. We need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for the president. We need to pray for the vice president, our governors, our mayors, the city officials, these police officers. We need to pray for all of them. We don't need to be judgmental. We don't need to be so critical. We don't need to be that. We don't need to be that. We need to be people of prayer and understand that we have a duty to obey the laws of the land, understanding that we are the church. Whether we meet in the building or not, thank God for all these wonderful other mediums that we have. And I'm going to let First Lady McGee close this out with this scripture with praying for for our leaders. Second Timothy chapter two, verse one and two says, therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and all who are in authority, Mm. that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reference. Amen. We are to pray for, as Pastor said, the presidents, uh, for the president, for the leaders of this world, the governors, the the mayors, all who has some type of say of what's going on right now. We are to pray for them and pray that God will give them people even if they're not saved that's god right. will bring people into their lives Absolutely. who are saved people that will give them. them some guidance on how to word, operate the things that we're that's going a good through word. right now that's a good word he sure will god will surround them with people that have the heart of God and the mind of God. And God has their ear and they have the ear of God as well. And so um, we have to pray for them. We have to pray for them. You know, I think I saw on television this morning that the governor of New York, he was out front and he was making some tough decisions. These are people that's responsible for thousands to millions of people. And they're not just making these decisions lightly and off the cuff. You know, everything is not the devil per se. You know, everything is not the devil. This is something that we haven't we haven't been through. We haven't experienced this as a nation before. Sure, diseases have come and gone, but this one has been unique. It kind of caught everybody off guard. But there is a word from the Lord, First Lady, that again, now we can count on it. We can count on it, you know, that we have victory over this virus. Well, I want you to type one more time before we close out, hashtag Christ over Corona. Hashtag Christ over Corona. Mm -hmm. And First Lady McGee will give you our last salutation and then I'm gonna let her pray. House Church, we will see you again soon. We'll be back together again soon. And y'all would get the most hugs that you've ever oh, gotten my. from the house church ah. real soon. Ah, right there. Amen. Right there. Ah, right we there. Love you guys and we miss you guys. Absolutely. Let's close out in prayer yes. for tonight. Father, we just thank you thank for you, this session on tonight, Father, I thank you, God, that how that your word do, did come forth, you, Father, Jesus. in clarity and in truth, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that how that we have faith over fear during thank this you, time. And Father, that how that we will not let fear 
control us. But Father, we walk by faith and not by sight. And God, I thank you, Father, that how that you would keep each and every one of us corralled, God, as we continue, Father, even to fellowship with one another by phone, texting, you, over yeah. the social media in which you have blessed us with. And God, I thank you that as we continue, Father, continue to pray about this COVID-19 and all that is going on in this world. Father, I thank you, God, that how that you continue to cover us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the blood of the Lamb, God, and for the word of our testimony. And God, we just thank you and give you all the praise, all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen thank you, Jesus. and amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you amen. all. We amen. love you. God bless you. And we will see you all soon. Absolutely. We love you all. God thank bless. You. God bless.